Tarlov cyst, also known as Tarlov perineural cyst or sacral nerve root cyst because that's where they're the most prevalent. Uh, they occur in the sacrum, uh, for those of you who might not know that location of your spine. Uh, it's the section between the lumbar spine and the coccyx, the tailbone. Uh, rarely imaged on an MRI when a patient's experiencing low back pain or other symptoms that might indicate uh, vertebra disc issues. So um, they are uh, pathologically a nerve, a spinal nerve that has dilated, filled with spinal fluid which causes incredible intractable pain. Nerve pain is very difficult to, uh, to treat, even with morphine and a lot of really strong narcotics. So um, patients have a lengthy process in getting diagnosed, although it's very easily imaged with MRI. The problem because of the cyst location being most prevalent uh, in the sacrum is that that area is rarely imaged. The sacrum, by the time an individual is in their 20s, is completely fused together. Vertebra and disc are all fused into a solid, thick, triangular-shaped bone. The rest of the spine has vertebra with disc between them. And so physicians generally with low back symptoms are looking for pathology at L45, the end of the lumbar spine. Uh, the protocol for imaging uh, lumbar MRI is T12, last segment of the thoracic spine, L1 through 5, all the lumbar spine, and S1, the most prevalent location of Tarlov perineural cyst, or at S2 and 3, so they're not imaged. So the patient gets a report from the MRI that says no abnormal findings. And that is uh, what happens a lot. Uh, also, uh, physicians who are not really familiar with them or believe they never cause any symptoms may mention that they're imaged. However, they often follow. Uh, there are perineal cysts uh, seen in the sacrum. They will follow that sentence on the report with the following. It's an incidental finding of no clinical significance. So unfortunately, that causes the ordering physician to dismiss and ignore the diagnosis. So even after the diagnosis sometimes, there's a long delay in anyone acknowledging. The patient continues to go from doctor to doctor uh, because there are multi-systems affected by this pathology, including uh, bowel and bladder, so GI systems, urinary symptoms, uh, uh, a lot of symptoms that affect uh, buttocks, hips, legs, feet, as far as nerve pain, so numbness, burning, tingling, uh, nerve pathology, nerve symptomatology rather. And uh, so the delay in diagnosis often causes uh, more nerve damage over time. So organ failure, system failure. Um, and um, critically important for them to be reported when they're imaged. Critically important uh, for the medical community to start, particularly family practice, uh, neurologist, neurosurgeons, uh, to start ordering when the patient has a subset of symptoms involving headaches, all the symptoms I've mentioned previously, vision, sensory issues, uh, blurred vision, double vision, because of increased spinal fluid pressure, causing, in some instances, papilledema, uh, optic nerve swelling, which would cause those vision changes and vision symptoms. Also, auditory uh, changes in terms of whooshing noises uh, or a feeling as if you're in a plane and you've changed sort of level and uh, uh, your ears sort of stop up. Or some patients experience sounds like uh, buzzing, popping, snapping, cracking, crickets. I'm just mentioning all those that have been mentioned uh, by patients that they experience. So the set of symptoms literally that can go from head to toe starts to make the patient sound a little crazy in their own head. Uh, multi-systems issues. And uh, it, it doesn't make sense to a lot of the medical community that there could be that many body systems involved from a spinal nerve root cyst. So a lot of problems in just getting the diagnosis and then becomes the problem of getting treatment. 